Good morning, Mrs Smith. Morning. My name is Dr Quigley. I'm one of the ward doctors. Nice to meet you. We've had a look at your blood results this morning and the, you're a little dehydrated. So what we'd like to do is to give you some fluids via a drip. But first of all, I will have to put in a small cannula. Would that be okay? Yeah. Could I have a little look at your arm, please? Mm -hmm. I'll go and gather my equipment, uh, but in the meantime, if you have a read at that leaflet for me. Thanks. And if you get any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Thank you. Thank you. Equipment should be gathered and placed on a clean, near patient tray. Items required include a disposable tourniquet, the appropriate size PVC, a needle free access device, a 10ml sterile syringe and a 2% clohexidine and 70% isopropyl alcohol impregnated wipe. Hand hygiene should be carried out using the six step technique. Appropriate personal protective equipment should be worn to reduce the risk of exposure to blood and body fluids. Gloves should be applied after donning a disposable apron. A disposable tourniquet should be applied. Cleanse skin with 2% clohexidine and 70% isopropyl alcohol impregnated wipe for a minimum of 15 seconds and allow to dry naturally. Do not repalpate the vein or touch the skin. Packaging should be opened carefully to avoid contamination of the PVC. The PVC has now been inserted and the site covered with a sterile semi-permeable dressing to secure the cannula in place. A needle-free connector, with or without extension, should be attached to the cannula after insertion. Access should be via the needle-free connector, not the port at the top of the device. Before accessing this, you should scrub the hub for at least 15 seconds with clohexidine 2% and 70% isopropyl alcohol wipe. All personal protective equipment should be removed before leaving the area and disposed of as clinical waste. Hand hygiene should then be carried out. Every peripheral venous catheter must have supporting documentation to evidence that the correct insertion technique and correct interventions are fully maintained for each patient. The PVC must be checked at least once per day and the care plan must be fully completed to ensure optimal practice to avoid patient harm. If the PVC is inserted out with the inpatient ward area, for example, the emergency department or operating theatre, it is the responsibility of the ward nursing staff to commence the care plan as soon as the patient is admitted to the area. If nursing staff are unable to state that the PVC insertion bundle elements have been met, then not applicable should be recorded. After three days, Removal of PVC must be considered. Rationale must be documented in the care plan if there is still a clinical reason for it to remain in situ. Supporting documents can be found in the online Infection Prevention and Control Manual.